Drama at Felder Global Ventures Holdings Bahad continues to unfold. The planter was paid a visit this morning by the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission a day after its CEO, Datuk Zakaria Arshad, visited its offices. A team of at least 25 MACC officers, accompanied by police, came to speak to the company's management and possibly receive documents relevant to the investigation. Separately, FTV's chairman, Tan Sri Issa Samad, said that he had not yet been summoned by the MACC to assist in the investigation, but said he had no qualms about the commission showing up on the company's doorstep, saying that the MACC should be allowed to do their job and that the Eternal Audit Committee will definitely cooperate. Dato Sri Idris Jala, who had been appointed by the government to oversee the investigation, also paid a visit to the FGV office in the afternoon. He later released a statement saying that he is currently focused on the work at hand to establish the relevant facts of the case, and that while he understands the intense interest, it is premature for him to make any statements at this juncture. Ratings agency Moody says that the proposed AMMB RHB merger would be credit positive for Ambank, but less so for RHB. Explaining that on a standalone credit basis, Ambank's funding profile is weaker than RHB's. As such, Ambank would benefit from being part of a larger banking group. But Moody says that any benefits to RHB are discounted by its slightly operating challenges to rationalise the organisation structure and infrastructure of the newly merged entity. Adding that RHB's integration of OSK Investment Bank as well as other similar mergers suggests significant challenges with the realisation of revenue and cost synergies occurring only after many years. Saying that, Moody's noted that the merger would still enhance the scale of RHB's ops and give it access to customers and products that Amazon Bank is strong in. Ambank's shares ended the day 1.02% lower at 4 ringgit 87 cent, while RHB's share price was 1.73% lower at 5 ringgit 10. Skomi Engineering Bahad has come out to vouch for the integrity of its trains a day after Rapid Rail Sunyan Bahad grounded its four car fleet for safety reasons. Rapid Rail, which runs the monorail, said it had identified in the four-car train set several areas of risk that could jeopardise its users. SCOMI had contested that the trains had undergone a rigorous validation process, design reviews and endurance tests, both independently or jointly with engineer Prasarana, after which the trains had been granted a railworthiness certificate by MMRA Limited, an international independent checking engineer appointed by Prasarana. SCOMI said that it had become aware of the grounding at the same time as the public after which the company approached RRML to discuss its concerns and recommend certain enhancements. Given all the checks that had been carried out, SCOMI opined that the trains are fit for operation. SCOMI and Prasarana are in the midst of a messy contractual dispute but had continued to lend support to Rapid Rail. Huayang Bahad is aiming to realise the potential of its 30.96% stake in Magna Prima Bahad over the next two years. It intends to do so by unlocking the value of the Lai Meng School land that Magna Prima currently owns. Huayang CEO Ho Wenyan said the company's most immediate focus is assisting Magna Prima on the operational side, adding that he is confident of the value of the project and that while Magna Prima has all the approvals, is currently looking at the market conditions. Explaining that because Magna Prima wants to realise the full value of the land, it wants to wait for a good time before launching the prime asset. As for any joint plans, Ho says that both groups are looking for a new land bank, saying that once they find something they can both enter into, then they can kick off. It was a disappointing first quarter for the Malaysian retail industry, recording a negative 1.2% growth rate compared to the same period in 2016 on the back of weaker CNY sales. According to a report by Retail Group Malaysia, these results were below its earlier projection of 1.5%, as well as the estimate made by the Malaysia Retailers Association of 0.9%. RGM pointed out that retail goods prices continued to rise mainly due to the weak RM and higher fuel prices. However, on the bright side, RGM is expecting the second quarter to turn in better numbers, explaining that the poor sales during the first quarter will be offset by the higher projection of the second quarter of 4.8%. Going forward, RGM is maintaining its 3.9% growth rate projection for 2017.